Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I can't resist it. We've got a couple of more groaners this morning. Here's the first one. What happens when you get scared half to death twice? Hmm. And the other one, hold the door open for a clown today. It's a nice jester. <laughs> Good morning, here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a Tuesday, May 16th. It's going to get nasty out there. I love that lady's song, God Bless America. Good morning, I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, and of course our sponsor, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations working and serving you. Great folks. And along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal, call them at 734-6969. Now without further ado, it's our pleasure. Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jerry, thank you for calling in this morning. I appreciate it, and the best of blessings to you today. Thank you so much. You bet. You have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless your whole group out there listening. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Very, very nice man right there. It's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by Lennox, along with Ramsey Heating and Electric, and they're offering up to a $1,700 rebate on qualifying new Lennox home comfort systems. You better call. You better find out more about it. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459, along with Lennox. Lennox, here's the weather. Be prepared for some rain and possible snow showers as we get through the week. But, you know, it is May. Welcome to southern Idaho. Looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for this morning. Increasing clouds for this afternoon, bringing with them periods of rain showers. Possible thunderstorms as well. And winds are going to be picking up. We're going to be in a wind advisory through tomorrow about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are expecting a high of 61 for today. Tonight, rain showers, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations, low of 34. That's going to carry over for tomorrow. We may see a little bit of sunshine, but thunderstorms and rain showers for the lower elevations. Snow showers for the upper elevations, a high of 46 with an overnight low of 35. And that could continue through Thursday with rain showers in the forecast and a high of 58. That's is your weather for Zephyr Threat. Oh, my goodness sakes. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. And the weather, of course, brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Don't forget, Thursday is sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 678-9411. Merv May, Cade Roggy, Lance Udy, the sale that works for you. Don't forget, Thursday sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard in 
in Burley. You be sure and be there. Uh, also want to say thank you very much to Kevin and Cindy and the whole crew over at Daryl's Cleaners. My, 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 my. Dry cleaning really prolongs the life of your garments. And I can attest to that. I've been taking my clothes in there for years. And, uh, you know, another thing they do over there that a lot of people aren't aware of, you don't have time to do the washing. You don't? Well, don't worry about it. Don't scramble your schedule. Take your clothes into Daryl's and they'll wash, dry, fold, and iron all your clothes. And save you a lot of time. Stop in. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Really, really good folks. Okay, calls are welcome and appreciated at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I um, got a real, kind of a neat schedule today. We're going to stay pretty close to home on most of our guests and our interviews. 906, we're going to have a very, very good friend of mine, Gary Shoresman, is going to be on talking about Minidoka County and the history. And at 930, we're going to revisit the story about what's going down in the trial regarding the Bundys and also some of the friends of the Bundy Ranch. And Andrea Parker is coming back on the air. 10.06 this morning, Dr. History will be here live in the studio. And then 10.32 this morning, I understand George Mass, Senator Kelly Anthon, and I think some other people are going to be here too. But uh, that's going on this morning right here at Zebeth Ranch. And we're looking forward to having them on the air. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Oh my goodness sakes, all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. And I don't care if you're going in for a doggone battery or a a light bulb or you need a whole heating and cooling system, they can and will help. Over 50 years serving you. Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459. And uh, if you get hungry like I do, oh boy, have you tried any one of the number of many, many new burgers at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, 611 North Overland and Burley. And the reason I bring it up because I want to acknowledge to the fact that we're going to be there on this Thursday for Lunch Bunch at 1130. Yep. 611 North Overland and Burley, America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. Great staff, super nice people. What a menu. And you can enjoy the food anytime, all the time. Also, they have a location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls, Denny's Restaurant. America's Diner with Zeb's Lunch Bunch coming up on this Thursday. By the way, Deanne, if you would be so kind as to, do you have a list of all the people that I need to thank? I believe... We want to thank uh, Smith's Food, and we want to thank Hanson Mortuary, and we want to thank Stokes and uh, Denny's. Who else? And let me know if I missed anybody, if you would, please. All right. Calls are welcome. 436 and Walmart. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Okay. Um, I see... It's all right to have speakers on the campus in Berkeley that can spew hatred and can talk about advocating of violence against the right and conservatives and talk about and really promote insurrection against this administration It's okay to go to people's homes and stand on their lawns all night long protesting them and their political beliefs with blowhorns so nobody can get any sleep. It's okay to break in, burn, and destroy to show your free speech. But if a conservative, i.e. Ann Colder and others, wants to give a speech on conservative values, family values, and principles of our Constitution, then the head of Berkeley and other locations say, oh, no, 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 we can't have you come on the campus. It might be a safety issue. This is what's happening. 
And we're letting it happen. We're letting it happen. Honestly, I know I I had a lady call the other day, and she was kind of upset at me, and she says, it almost sounds like you're advocating violence. And I said, how can you perceive that? I am saying that we need to fight back and get the equality deserved to us in a free society. In other words, Ann Coulter had every right to speak at Berkeley. Every right to reek, uh, uh, to speak under a contractual agreement that she had with that university. But when the university backed down and said, well, no, 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 we can't have you here, it might be a safety issue for the students. That is a complete wash and balderdash. And I maintain that we on the right, have got to preserve our rights and our freedoms, even if it does end up in confrontations. Now, there are those out in the audience that keep saying, well, turn the other cheek. We'll be better for it because we'll turn the other cheek. And then we'll keep turning to the other cheek. Wait a minute. That's what's wrong with our society today. We've kept turning the other cheek so many times. We've lost our values. We've lost our common sense. And we're losing our country. How many of you actually, actually believe that we should just sit in the corner and not say or do anything when these absolute sinister people are out there taking our Constitution and our family values and everything away from this country and throwing it in the trash can. I don't want to sit in the corner. And I won't. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know, they had a guy on television. His name was uh, Kevin Zeiss. I followed this guy a little bit, and all he is is an activist that will do anything and basically uh, condone almost everything and uh, will condone violence because, like he said last night on television, he kind of avoided the direct question of of uh, Tucker Carlson when he said, Carlson asked him, do you advocate violence and everything? And he said, well, I can't speak for those that are involved in that type of thing, but he said they're trying to get their point across. Well, I think we on the right need a counteractive confrontation with these people. Caller, hang on just one minute. I'll be right with you, I promise. I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental, and they have three locations to serve you. South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment to get the job done right. Whether you're leasing it on equipment rentals or buying it, retail equipment sales, they have all the equipment and the knowledge for the equipment that will get the job done for you. Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. And don't forget, they've got those Walker lawnmowers. Woo! They are the mowers the pros use. 0% interest for 48 months at Barry Equipment and Rental, Jerome Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Me? Yeah, go ahead. On with this last comment. Um, people, uh, I meet people every day here in our area. Uh, and we discussed this, and um, they absolutely do not know where to go because this political thing is so huge and so large. But one thing that I found that we all have in common is our, in our families, uh, we people are not talking now to one another. Grandparents aren't talking to the grandkids or the children because of the political difference. And how many of them do not know what socialism is? And uh, a lot of the great-grandparents, came here from Russia to get away from the Bolshevik Revolution. So it's my contention that anybody who wants to do something politically ought to grab one member of their family and sit them down and have a conversation and convert them back to what we're talking about in freedom and what the Constitution is about and how we got here and why we're here. 
Do you disagree, caller, with me? And please, uh, I know the voice and I know who I'm talking to, But uh, and feel free to disagree with me if you wish. But do you feel that we, uh, of the conservative values, family values, and believe in our Constitution and the laws in our system, we basically are letting the left take a hammer and a chisel and just tear that building down, and we're not doing a doggone thing to stop it? Well, I agree with you totally, Seth, and that's why I rack my brain. What in the world can we do, little people sit here in Paul or Rupert, Idaho, or, or in this area? And uh, I think we got to start with our families and personal friends and not be afraid to not talk uh, you... to each other. And you have to hammer the point across is that uh, um, it has to start here. The big guys are, are doing whatever they're going to do, but here we sit waiting and wondering and the only thing i can think is and it's very distasteful to get a hold of one of your younger family members uh and uh, not necessarily rip into them but start having some dialogue because they do not want to talk they do not want to discuss it if you disagree with them i saw a young man and he was very young uh by the look of his face last night i doubt seriously if he was over 21 years of age and he was on television, and he was absolutely espousing the values of complete socialism for us here in this United States, and condemning capitalism, condemning America for the way it has been over the last 200-plus years. This kid didn't know Khmer from Sikkim, had never been anywhere, never done anything, never served his country, didn't have a clue. How in the world are people following these kinds of kids like uh, rats with the Pied Piper. It's making me sick. Something's got to be done. Well, Zeb, we got so politically correct in the last 30 and 40 years that uh, we let just watch TV and the man, the male figure, the father figure is, is a buffoon. I agree. You make a fool out of yeah. him like he doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And in my day, my father would get five bucks for half a dozen reasons. Uh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more, and I talked about that a little bit yesterday. The the TV commercials and the sitcoms and all the garbage that's on TV is male bashing to wussification of men. And I'm telling guys in the audience, stand up and be who you are. And this transgender thing, you know, I've got about as much patience with that as I do with, uh, with somebody pushing their button on the nuclear holocaust. I mean, I am absolutely fed up with the destruction of God's principles in this country, and we better get back to the basics before too long. Well, and that's, I confirm that exactly, and that's why parents, grandparents have to start talking to members of their family instead of not being talked to, but we're so politically correct, we don't want to hurt little Johnny's feelings. Well, it's not hurting his feelings, uh, we're preserving our country. That's right. Gary, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right with you. I promise. Don't go away. I've got to tell everybody about my friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I, you know, everybody thinks, well, that's just a commercial. No, this is a testimonial from me. They have helped me a lot, and they can help you, too. I mean, when I went through the knee surgery and then the hip surgery replacement and everything, wow, they can help you get back to being you. Call them for an appointment at 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1260. 63 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. All the physical therapists are absolutely first class. And they can and will help you with all the exercises, the hydrotherapy pool, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Caller, you are on the air. Good morning. And a good morning to you, too. You know, anyone that excels in their profession or whatever they do, they should be applauded. But you take like Tim Allen, who is a very, very talented person, and I, I love the guy because he always had good values, and he put on a good show, and he was just downright comical. They shunned him. And then Miss America, Miss USA... What is the difference between Mrs. USA and Miss America? Well, there's two different titles. Uh, Miss America is one title, Miss USA is the other. I'm not going to get into that because I couldn't care less about why they have two titles. But your point about Tim Allen 
with the show called The Last Man Standing. I talked about it yesterday on my program. Uh, He had some of the highest ratings on television right now, and they pulled him. Why did they pull him? Blatantly for one simple reason. He's a conservative in Hollywood, and they can't stand that. They just will put up a sign on, you know, at the studios. If you're conservative, stay out. Yeah, if you've got family you know, values. The sign up because uh, if you're just trying to break into show business, now this is going to hurt Tim Allen, but it isn't going to destroy him. But if you're just getting started in the business and you're conservative, your chances of succeeding are minimal. I agree with you. There are only a handful of Hollywood people and personnel and actors that have the guts, the intestinal fortitude to stand up and say to the system, you are absolutely liberal criminals for what you're doing. Tom Selleck is another one that stood up and said no. Gary Sinise is another one that said, stood up and said no. And of course, Tim Allen and few others. But you know what? You're right. Their careers are in jeopardy for future contracts. It's a sick, perverted la-la land in Hollywood. You know what I, I like about old Wilford Brimley? He was as old as I am, or maybe even older. Yeah. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind, and I love that guy. Well, I'll really tell you what, it's about... Because he's one of the best actors that come into Hollywood. Well, it's about time we all started speaking up. I, you know what? I take heat and people say, well, you shouldn't say that. Well, people say you shouldn't offend those people. I don't care if people are offended. We've got a basic right and wrong in our society, Keith Cottom. You know that as well as I do. And if you're going to advocate nothing, you're just standing in the middle of the road waiting for both sides of the highway to hit you. Yeah, you know, when you're talking to your friends, why do we have to be so careful oh, yeah. not to say something that's not politically correct? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm i not politically correct. Friendship? Yeah, I, I don't care about... If I have to worry about what I say to my friends, they're not much friends. Well, you don't know that until you talk to That's them. right. <laughs> Keith, God bless you, man. i got a commercial break i got to get in. Thank you so much for your call. I appreciate it. Thank you, always. You're Certainly welcome. All right, sir. Calls welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. This balderdash of worrying about offending somebody. Why? Call her, I'll be right there. I promise. I gotta pay some bills. That's the radio business. Ag Express is looking for drivers and they're looking for full and part time positions. They're looking for retired folks too that want to work only two or three days a week. Yep, whatever works best for you. And you're home every night and you're using new and maintained equipment. Hey, 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 you better get a hold of them today. Great vacation programs, benefit programs. My, my, Ag Express. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886 Allen in Twin Falls 731-2495 and Russ in Burley at 431-7175 Ag Express is looking for drivers Ag Express is looking for you I'll be right there caller don't forget Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with Dr. Christine Pickup and they are located right across from the Minidoka County Hospital Emergency Room they're going to have another seminar and it's going to be this Thursday at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce at noon. They're hosting another luncheon. As I said, lunch will be served. And all you need to do is RSVP to their office now, 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 today at 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957. If you've got hearing problems and want to learn more about hearing, go to this seminar on Thursday at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Caller, good morning you're on the air. Deb, I don't get a call very much, but when I do, I hope I have something important to say. I think it's all about advertising. I called you once before telling you what a young man or a young woman should be. That's, you know, take some full responsibility for themselves. But what I'd like to add to it today, it's all in the advertising. These political correct people are constantly advertising the corruptness of their ideas. And they're misinformed. I use tools every single day, lots of tools. And, you know, these trans uh, genders, you know, God gave them certain tools that he wanted us to come into this world 
and use for specific purposes. And it's, it's like I take a wrench and I think I'm going to cut it up and do something else with it. Sometimes it really works good to cut it and, and redo it. But the majority of the time you just wasted the tool. And at some point you're going to need that tool again. Now, I, I'm of the belief that when, when we go back to meet our maker again, he's going to point and he's going to say, get back down there and do it again. I gave you the tools. Now, damn it, I want you to do the right deal with the right tool. And so they're going to have to do it all over again. So basically, they're harming themselves, and they don't realize it, but I think we need to advertise that they're harming themselves. And, you know, they better get it right, uh, and, and, you know, maybe they don't believe in God or anything like that. But bless their hearts, bless their souls. I'd love to just see them, see them get it right and do the best thing they can, because I have a feeling it's going to come around again, and, it, and it's going to bite them. It's doing them harm, and, and we need to make them realize, just like the Surgeon General warning on cigarettes, mm-hmm. you do this, and you're harming yourself. And you're not becoming the full potential God gave you. There you go. There you go. Do the right thing. There you go. You know, I thought... Be productive and enrich our our lives, our nation, our world. I agree. You know, that was a a great... We need to keep putting a plug in every day and do as much advertising for the good side as they do for the corrupt side. I agree with you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for all your comment because it was very well constructed and very thought out. I appreciate it, sir. God bless you for your call. Call again. Thank you. Have a great day, Jeff. You know, thank you. This man that just called, uh, I really uh, listened to his remarks and I want to comment. God gave us, and for those that say, well, I don't believe in God. Well, that's your problem, and I pity you. But God gave us all talents to use. Maybe we don't have the same physical characteristics. Some of us can't walk. Some of us can run. Some of us could be computer scientists. Some of us might not be able to even come close to that. We all have different talents for different things in our life to work and achieve and be better. But these liberal lefties, the millennials, many, many, many of them, are stuck in a rut of doing nothing and saying everything negative. I not only pity these people, I abhor those people, because they're wasting their lives by being nothing but negative and critics and doing nothing. Caller, please bear with me just a moment. i got to get this in. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, and they're offering up to a $1,700 rebate on Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Gas furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, etc. All you have to do is call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Also, I want to remind the folks out there in Radio Land about KNR Rental. Hey, hey, Memorial Day is not that far away, just about a week and a half. If you're going to be staying home on Memorial Day and doing a bunch of fix up, clean up, build up, whatever, and need tools. They've got all the equipment from forklifts all the way to lawnmowers over there at KNR Rental. And nice people. They've been in business since 1979, and they can and will help you. KNR Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, 678 3122. Caller, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you this morning? I am fine, sir. How are you? I'm fine. <clears throat> I have never. I'm all. I'm a. I'm a guy that what's going on with our country, our Christianity, our culture is being attacked on all fronts by the media. It's, and, um, it's really getting to be quite a problem for us Christians. They we need to. We, we, we need, we, I mean, when our churches are being turned into mosaics by the Muslims, and when the ministers give their blessings and appear there, they should be ashamed of themselves. Yes. <clears throat> there, there is a problem in America right now. I found a mom for fortune, and we are like lamb being led to the slaughter. We don't even, we're so ignorant. Our enemies make a note of this, that 
our enemies know more about our democracy, about our belief system, than a lot of us about our Bible, about our churches, than we do. I agree. They know where our power lies. And we need to know, we need to know our Bible. We need to know our churches. We need to know our God. Because right now, it appears that what's going on in this country is a lack of not knowing God. We have become a nation of atheists, unbelieving people, and our enemies are now coming with their gods. It's the same thing throughout the Bible. Study your Bible and read the history of how they conquer. They know our laws, they know our Christianity, they know our democracy, our democ- they know everything about us, and we don't know anything. That's we right. We don't know our Constitution, we don't know our Bible, we don't know our churches. And that's why our churches and our government is slowly but surely being transformed into something else that was not originally in the Constitution. Sir, thank you. Uh, Every time you call, you give some really good thoughts and great ideas of what needs to be done in this country. And I have never met you personally. I hope someday I can shake your hand in person. But God bless you for your thoughts this morning. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man's right. You know, we have, we've gone down this nasty, dirty road, dust-filled, gravel-filled with a lot of potholes and everything else, of the liberal left. And we're seeing more of a denigration of our society. We're seeing more of a denigration of our schools. We're seeing more of a denigration of our laws and our constitution. And we're seeing more of a denigration of family values and what's right and wrong. Hey! Stop the bus, Gus. Let us all off and let's walk back up that gravel road with all the potholes and get back at the main intersection and get on the right road. We've been listening to these sleazy liberal left Democrats and their silly perverted platform for way too long. Get a broom and a dustpan and clean it out. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Oh, by the way, uh, come on, give me a call. It's time to grow on Thursdays at 915 with uh, University of Idaho horticulturalist, and that's Tony McCammon. This week we're going to be talking about lawns and why they're dying and looking really ugly and everything else. Tony's great. Don't forget, 915, it's time to grow on Thursdays. And Tony McCammon with the University of Idaho. Great program. By the way, I also want to say thank you while I'm waiting for your next phone call. I've got a cough drop in my mouth, and boy, are those tart. Woo, baby. I mean, look out. I want to also mention to you, my good buddy Doug Martin is home, had surgery. We pray that everything's going well for him. And his business, Doug's Alternator and Starter Repair, they will have somebody there today, today, to make sure they can help you with your problems. So don't forget, Doug's Alternator and Starter Repair in Hayburn, and they will have somebody there today. Okay. Calls welcome and on the air. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, Zeb. You know, I think one of the problems that we've got is this younger generation has never, that are out there demonstrating, has never been outside the country. That's right. They're buying into this crap from uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Schumer and Pelosi and the rest of that bunch. They have no idea what they're losing, what they're giving up, until it's too late. You know, Tony, you're so spot on. That's exactly right. This 21-year-old punk last night that had no idea. He didn't know Kamir from Sikkim. He didn't know uh, Mickey Mouse from Minnie Mouse. He couldn't tell you anything about what's going on in the world other than what he's been force-fed with liberalism that says capitalism is wrong, the United States is wrong, we're the enemy. I am so sick and tired of these kids getting a speaker's post and standing up and indoctrinating more stupid snot-nosed kids that have no clue what's going on. Yeah, I've been in a lot of foreign countries when I was in my military service, and I couldn't wait to get back to the United States because I knew what we had, the good stuff we had waiting here. And some of the people that I talked to over there, 
they're not very happy about the government they've got. So these kids are buying into communism, socialism, Muslimism, and everything else, and they're going to find out that if this country falls, they're going to live under a dictatorship that's going to put them in a gulag somewhere. I I know it. I, I feel that it's occurring right now as we speak. I mean, the left is taking over, but it's our fault because we're not fighting back. And this program, I don't know when I'm going to... fairgrounds here, and I'd pay a mission of 10 bucks to come up there and attend. We could uh, get... A, Maybe a couple thousand people at one of our fairgrounds to really let the uh, left know what's going on yeah. and how we feel. Yeah, we need to invite CSI, the Times News, and the Twin Falls City Council. I wonder if they'd show up. Oh, don't even talk about that, people. <laughs> I can tell you a few stories. But okay. Not on the air. All right, Tony, my friend, take care. Thank you so much. Okay, man. Oh, uh, I I'm really frustrated. Uh, and here's another story of frustration. Michelle Obama is all in a tizzy. Oh, she is absolutely livid mad at President Trump and his administration. And she came out yesterday in another liberal low-class remark and said, well, the reason that Trump changed the dietary menus for the schools was because he doesn't like kids. That's an asinine, stupid liberal statement by the former first lady, Mama Obama. He doesn't like kids. Well, listen, Michelle, the schools... And the kids and the parents, in general, all across this country, couldn't stand your menus. 56%. Let me say that number again so that even liberals can try to understand. 56% of the food was thrown in the garbage can. It was slop. And it warms my heart to see the changes so that kids that are in sports and kids that need the rejuvenation of maybe some food at lunchtime to get their minds and their bodies geared for the rest of the day, they're going to eat something in the, in the lunchrooms right now that's going to make them sit up and want to pay attention. And for the athletes, they don't have to pilfer food and run down to the store or have somebody bring food to them before practice because there's a doggone hungry they could eat a basketball. She said that now the kids are going to end up eating, and these are her words, not mine. She said now the kids with Trump are going to end up eating more crap. Gee, what a professional way to sum it up from a former first lady. And every single nutritionist I've talked to, every one, bar none, has never come out in favor of what Mama Obama tried to do to the school systems with the lunch menus. No one nada. Now, some may say behind closed doors or with certain groups, oh, yeah, well, I supported her. Well, that's not the truth. Most all of them I've talked to all over the United States, many have been on this air. Absolutely glad to see her menu go. Um, I understand, I should have said this yesterday, and I heartily apologize. I was just handed a note that yesterday, and I hope they're listening in Twin Falls, that Tony and Mary Salerno, 51 years, Deanne, or 57, of marital bliss with a happy anniversary. And I understand Tony had a happy birthday yesterday, 57 years or 51. 51 years. Okay. Well, Tony and Mary Salerno, two of our dearest, dearest friends. Deanna and I love to go to breakfast with them sometimes. And uh, yesterday was Tony's birthday. And what about the anniversary? Is that today or tomorrow? It was yesterday. It was yesterday also. Okay. Birthday and anniversary on the same day. Happy anniversary and birthday, Tony and Mary Salerno. They are special. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Some guy stopped me the other day. I was coming out of a, a store, and he said, aren't you afraid of upsetting the liberals? 
and losing their listenership? And I said, no, not at all. I really don't care if they're offended because I'm going to keep hammering at them until finally maybe they'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. But in their case, that light might be a train coming at them head on. Time for the weather. Brought to you by Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center, 382 North Overland and Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East and Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Minor emergencies, major care. The doctor will see you now, now, not in four or five days. No memberships required, and believe me, they care. They're open seven days a week at the Urgent Cares. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Be prepared for some rain and possible snow showers as we get through the week. But, you know, it is May. Welcome to southern Idaho. Looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for this morning. Increasing clouds for this afternoon, bringing with them periods of rain showers. Possible thunderstorms as well. And winds are going to be picking up. We're going to be in a wind advisory through tomorrow about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are expecting a high of 61 for today. Tonight, rain showers, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations, low of 34. That's going to carry over for tomorrow. We may see a little bit of sunshine, but thunderstorms and rain showers for the lower elevations. Snow showers for the upper elevations, a high of 46 with an overnight low of 35. And that could continue through Thursday with rain showers in the forecast and a high of 58. That's is your weather is up at the ranch. No, I appreciate that. Minor emergencies, major care. We will see you today at the Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care in Twin Falls, and Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. They are the best. Great people serving you and your family. And I just knocked over everything here on my desk, too. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. By the way, did you folks happen to hear about the youngest ever person to graduate from TCU University? As a matter of fact, I think he's one of the youngest ever from any college or university or at least in the top 10 a 14 year old boy graduated from tcu university in texas and listen to this his 11 year old brother is going to enroll at tcu next fall I mean, here we got a 14-year-old going across the stage to get his diploma at 14 with the 21, 22, and 23-year-olds, and now his brother, 11-year-old, is going to go to that same school, and they're both majoring in, oh, man, I can't even say the names of some of these science classes, which shows how far advanced they are over me. But, I mean, I have never in my life seen two brothers. They were interviewed on television this morning, and the 14 and the 11-year-old were sitting with their mother They were so polite. They were so absolutely happy and smiles. And they were, wow, you talk about super young kids. They are 14, graduating from college, 11, going to go to college this fall. (laughs) Uh, I don't think I was in that status when I was 14 and 11. Were you? Calls welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Come on, come on, come on, give me a call. Hillary Clinton is nothing more than a troublemaker. That's all she is. She's absolutely nothing more than a troublemaker. And she's launching her own new political organization called Onward Together, and all that is going to do is create more havoc of resisting and persisting and animosity against the current administration. Oh, goody. Granny's causing trouble. Get your broom, Granny. Fly around the room once or twice. Take a landing in the rocking chair and just absolutely say, you got beat fair and square. You're not accepted by the American public. We don't want to hear about your walks in the woods anymore. Stay home. But no, she's not going to do that. 
Hillary isn't going to quit. And she made a stupid statement on one of her tweets the other day, and she said, People across America have made their voices heard thanks to Indivisible Team and supported Swing Left's efforts to take back the House of Representatives. Really, Hillary? Hmm. And then she wrote another one that said, At Indivisible Team and at Swing Left and at Color of Change, we're organizing for criminal justice reform, voter freedom. What does that mean? Voter freedom. Does that mean anybody? And how many times, Hillary? And fairness and accuracy in the media. Oh, like MSNBC. Or like CBS with Dan Rather. Or like the uh, scapegoats of some really bad reporting at NBC. I see. Okay. And other racial justice issues. You see what she's doing here? She's pandering for all the minorities to look at her as the shining beacon of light on the hill and illegalities against our Constitution. And and then in another tweet she wrote, and thousands of young people have signed up to run for something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hillary. And then she, I got to tell you the rest of these quick. But she said also, and I'm, I'm, I'm condensing this down a little bit, but I know what I'm still fighting for. A kinder, big-hearted, inclusive America onward. Sounds like a Girl Scout leader. And then she had the quote here. She said, in recent months, we've seen what's possible when people stand up for a fairer, big-hearted, more inclusive America. No, Hillary, we haven't seen that. What we've seen are quite a few thugs and punks and ne'er-do-wells break windows, start burning and looting, and cause disruption in our society. Is that what you represent? I think so. And she said, chip in today. Oh, here's where she asked for the money. I knew it was coming. (laughs) We found it. She says, chip in today to help Onward Together support the people and the organizations championing the vision that earned 66 million votes in the last election, but she doesn't say that she lost. And at the very end of this story about Hillary, and this was a compilation story put together by Caitlin Collins of Media Research Center, it says, So now I'm back to being an activist citizen and part of the resistance. Doesn't that bother you? It does me. It sounds like a leftist, socialist Venezuela. And I spent decades learning about what it would take to move our country forward. So now I'm back to being an activist citizen and part of the resistance. Those words are chilling words right there. Part of the resistance. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Hillary, please, you're nothing more than a hateful, spiteful, despicable old granny that lives in a very me-first world. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center is doing the right thing matters. And, you know, if you're going to go to, let's say, Kansas City, or you're headed towards, oh, maybe a vacation in the New England states back in the Northeast, well, you need to have some safe tires. Well, whether you're using your car, they've got all your passenger car tires, or whether you're going to use a pickup or an SUV, maybe take a little camp trailer along behind you, you better make sure you got the tires that are going to get you there safely. They've got all the tires all the different tread designs for you at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Absolutely the best in tires, 
and the best in brake service, along with front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. You better stop in there before you go anywhere and make sure that you're travel ready at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Your and mine, Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All right, well, I see that we've uh, almost come to the end of the trail this first hour. Thank you for all your comments and your thoughts. We've got to clean this mess up, guys and gals. you got to speak up. you got to get active. Everybody's got to get a broom and a dustpan and sweep out this filthy liberalism. That's what it is. Filthy liberalism. I hope there's some listening this morning. I really do. I hope there's some liberals listening. Coming after you. We're coming after you. News is next from CBS. And then we'll have Gary Shoresman on the line. Gary going to be very interesting about uh, history in Minidoka County. 9.30, we're going to have Andrea Parker back on the phone. So everybody stay tuned. Zeb at the Ranch, I'll be back in 7. morning 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 on a tuesday already may 16th my goodness it's uh, gonna get a little nasty out here weather wise for the next couple of days morning everybody i'm zeb bell zeb at the ranch with our major sponsor your magic valley les schwab tire centers all seven locations serving you along with some of our great advertisers including western way services from the canyons of the snake river goodness sakes don't forget the go mini storage units you heard old joe talking about those the other day you can either have one delivered to your home fill it full leave it at your home or have them store it at the location of western way services my goodness they are always at your disposal all you have to do is call them 734-6969 loyal to the community and the people that they serve western way services Always at your disposal. Really good folks. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget on Mondays at 9.15, Vicky's Country Garden brings you Gardening for Idiots, program named after me. 185 South, 600 West of Paul, number to call, 438-5663. Vicky has been celebrating 20 years in business, and she's got a brand new shipment of perennials and all the vegetables for your garden and all the bark and the rock and the yard art. Oh, it's all there at Vicky's Country Garden. 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Don't forget her program segment at 9. 15 on Mondays. And before we go to our guest, boy, these cough drops. <laughs> They're different. They're weird because, I mean, you talk about make your mouth water. Woo! They are tart. And uh, we want to remind everybody about our friends over at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Yes, warm hearts for cold noses. Dr. Bill, good guy. I really enjoy him and uh, talking to him. Dr. Bill, Dr. Liz, the whole crew over there reminding you to get your dogs and your puppies vaccinated against a dead highly contagious viral infection called parvovirus. Don't let your dogs suffer. Take them in today. Have them vaccinated for that parvovirus. And uh, Ark Animal Hospital located at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Number to call 678 Seven seven, really nice people. And last but not least, this morning our thanks go out again to our dear friend Joel Heward at Hanson Mortuary. Anybody and everybody that meets him 
And his family and his staff, they are so impressed with the way that he's so congenial, so friendly, and so helpful. And they can and will help you with all the arrangements when there's the passing of a loved one. Always, always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Remember the number and call them at 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, serving you and your family. Well, good morning to a dear friend, Gary Shoresman. How are you? Good. Excellent. I hear there's snow on the way. I don't have to mow the lawn. <laughs> well, well, you can, but go through with the snowblower first. <laughs> True. Okay. Gary, you have been involved in history, uh, I think, uh, almost all of your life, and especially now over at Minidoka County for the Historical Society. Uh, give us a little background about how you got tangled up with all the days of the long-gone past. Well, that's yeah, true. Uh, all my life, I kind of I did grow up um, hearing of our family history, uh, escaping the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, and being some of the first settlers in the Dakotas in the 1870s, and then uh, immigrating to Idaho out here in 1911. So I kind of followed all of that, heard of the politics, and also heard a lot about the family that uh, stayed in Russia and how they got persecuted during World War I and World War II. So anyway, then when I moved back, uh, I graduated from Menico in 1960, and then it was uh, in 1999 that I moved back to uh, Rupert to uh, take care of my father. That way, of course, I'm still here. So it was in 2000 that I became president of the Menado County Historical Society and Museum for a couple of years, and it was then that I saw that there were some history that had been left out or had been completed. We had only done one book on the county, but none on any of our five towns in Minidoka County. So then I became co-chair with the Rupert Centennial in 2006, and of course chairman in Minidoka County um, 100 years in 2013. But earlier on, I decided to do a little correct some of the mistakes I heard people talking about. And then there was a lot of people who had moved here who nothing about about our history, really, how each town began and this irrigation project began. So that's when I started doing some of these books. Let me ask you this, Gary. Uh, when you hear statements made by people, oh, who cares about that old uh, barn over there? Who cares about that old sign? Who cares about all those old guns and all that old tack and everything? Just get rid of it. It's in the way. What are your feelings when you hear that kind of stuff? Well, um, you know, my, my favorite saying in life is because if you want to know where you're going, you should know where you come from. And if you're going to destroy all of your past and your history, well, then you're doomed to uh, get just what's coming to you. So, uh, but that's also part of what's a problem, as you've heard me say before on, on the radio, is that uh, we don't talk to one another. I grew up listening to my dad and my grandfather talking about the good old days, and I would have rather spent more time with those old folks telling about the uh, the days on the uh, on the prairie and being chased by an old boar hog or outrunning Indians in the early days and how that all began and I thought, good grief. And then one day it dawned on me that I was actually the third generation born in America. I just thought those old folks, I thought even my dad had come from us. I didn't even know he was born here until one day I woke up and uh, uh, smelled the coffee. You know, Gary, when you think about it, uh, when, and, I, and this is kind of a naive question on my part, I should know this, but when here in America, not just Minidoka County, not just the state of Idaho, but basically around the United States, when did they start keeping and maintaining and uh, utilizing museums for some of the days gone by and some of the equipment and everything? Where was the first museum and who got the idea, I wonder, to preserve some of the past? Well, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, O'Donnell, uh, who is no longer with us, but he began the uh, uh, museum in 1970. And uh, it was like right next to where the water tower is in Rupert. Then it kind of progressed early on to there until they uh, found the location out by the fair, fairgrounds. And uh, 
brought the museum in. See, but at that time, you had a membership of a couple hundred people, but those were all people who were grew up in the Depression, went served through World War II, and they really, they were happy the old days were gone, but they didn't, they weren't happy that the, uh, the, the morality of the old days had gone by, and they were really preserving their past and wanted to preserve it for the future generations, such as myself and the younger kids who, who still come out there as a classroom. Well, now, Gary, what about this open house that's going to take place this coming weekend on Saturday the 20th? Uh, give us some particulars about uh, what's going to happen starting at noon on Saturday. Well, it's the first time we've had an open house in quite a few years, uh, and it is. It's going to be Saturday, this coming May 20th, and we're going to have a, it'll be uh, about noon when we start. And 1 o'clock, what has happened is um, we had a, as you entered the museum on the left, was a uh, workshop. Well, nobody uses that workshop anymore. It was instrumental in when the museum uh, began and displays were being built. So uh, Ray Stockton, one of the board members, decided to turn that into a stock and livery room. So he gathered up, I mean, he cleaned and painted, dropped the ceiling, painted walls, put up uh, doors and uh, to make it look like an old-fashioned livery room. And we decided to honor him and call it the Ray Stockton Tack and Livery Room, which is going to be dedicated on Saturday. But in this room, he's got, we have... Uh, Everything from uh, saddles to bits, harnesses, uh, and a special door for branding iron. So everybody that wants to bring their branding iron in from Manitoba County, uh, we're going to heat them up and we're going to brand a special door inside the uh, inside that room. And uh, so that would be kind of fun uh, to do to see that. Now, also from noon, twelve thirty to three thirty, we're going to have. Uh, Pulled pork and drinks for five dollars, and that's going to be provided by the Rupert Veterans Memorial. And uh, anyway, they uh, part of those proceeds are going to go right back into the museum. Okay. Uh, Two thirty is the dedication of that Ray Stockton Tack and Livery Room, and they're going to have a ribbon cutting, and the museum board and the Chamber of Commerce ambassadors will be there, and also the Twin Falls Corvette Club will be on site. They'll be having their meeting that day. But anyway, in this room, there's saddles, wagons, horseshoes, and a fabulous woven wire fence maker, uh, which is like how they made fences out in the field. They pulled it right along as they made that fence. It's, it's quite fabulous, and it really works. Let me ask. And, uh, then we have, uh, just recently, within the last year, has acquired a fantastic gun collection from uh, Wayne Birch, and uh, that will all be on display. And... There's over 200 firearms uh, wow. that he has collected through the years, and they're, it's really quite wonderful, and they're in our main room. So the museum will be open for everyone, uh, and that gun collection, but also with that um, uh, livery room, stock and livery room. Gary, let me ask you this. You know, you've studied exactly what happened years and years ago uh, on the Oregon and the California trails and people moving and migrating into this area and everything. Doesn't it surprise you, and uh, do you still look for a lot of the artifacts today? I mean, I would imagine that there's still a lot of items that are left out there somewhere, whether it's guns or cooking utensils or uh, some something from their home back east that fell out of the wagon or anything? I don't think we've even scratched the surface, or have they found almost everything? Yeah, you'd be surprised what just underneath the, underneath the surface is very much like the uh, Indian arrowheads and things first. So uh, there was a, a lot of history through here, first off back in the 18, late 1860s with the cattle coming through and sheep bands coming from Oregon to Nebraska to be shipped off. So... There's a um, lot, of, lot of history. You know, when you have this museum, what are your goals for the future? I mean, uh, are you going to have to be looking at a bigger location, a bigger building? It sounds to me like this is really growing over in Minidoka County. Well, we've got two things going on out, uh, at the museum. As one, we do have a building fund because we do need to expand uh, and, and add on or build a separate building, whatever it's going to be, to get a 
lot of the items that we have in boxes and are jammed together and whatever uh, to display them. So anyone who would want to donate uh, to that building fund, uh, it would be a charitable donation and tax uh, tax deductible. Uh, the second thing is I spearheaded a couple of years ago to digitize all 111 years of the Minnedoka County newspapers. So that's a separate, I call it Digi Project for digitization. <laughs> and we have the first 24 years now up in Boise being scanned uh, and ready to come back, and then we'll start on the next uh, 25 years to work our way through. But um, little by little, that's all strictly donation to, and we're, the, the grants are few and far between, but uh, we did get a $3,000 grant in kind to uh, have archival safe boxes to put our newspapers in once they've been taken apart. So wow. we'll still retain them. And uh, so uh, it takes, uh, we've got several hundred hours just in preparing those books, taking them out of their binders and counting the pages and fixing the tears in the pages before we ship them off. So uh, that's, all in, that's all charitable donation also. Uh, and should anybody want to make a... Uh, a donation, make it out to the Minnedoka County Historical Society, and either for the building fund or the digi fund. Okay. Or the other. But anyway, Saturday should be a fun day to have a lot of people there and to look at, look us over and get reacquainted and meet the board and meet the other members of the there and have some pulled pork. And I do have, to, I just cannot resist. They did want to be mentioned, but uh, Donna and uh, George Mass will be there also. Well, nobody, nobody in the world does more for the community than you and George and Donna and others. And I personally am a real history nut, and I love museums. And, you know, it's funny, Gary, but when I traveled a lot, when I was rodeoing full-time, I'd go to various towns, whether it was in California or back in the Midwest or whether it was down in the South. Or I really particularly liked one museum in particular. That was a Don. Dodge City, Kansas, and all the old firearms that uh, were used by some of the bad hombres back in that time, and also another good museum down in northern Nevada at Elko, and now it sounds like your museum over in Minidoka County is making big steps to be as big as or more important than these others. Are you there? <laughs> I lost him. Um, I think it cut out on me. Are you still there? Uh, it did cut out, Gary. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Oh. No, uh, you were talking. I just couldn't hear you. All of a sudden. Yeah, I, I don't know if the, they had a cut off at the station or what, but I was just saying I really enjoy seeing various museums all across the United States that represent the history of that area. And I was saying I've been to Dodge City, Kansas for that museum, northern Nevada, with the, all the interest in uh, the Silver State. And it sounds like with all the work you're putting into this one, this is a must-see museum in Minidoka County. Oh, absolutely, and the, uh, the the most fun part about this is uh, these items didn't come from anywhere else. They came as soon as they, you know, less than just a little bit more than 100 years ago, all of these items that are in the museum came with the homesteaders and the dry farmers that moved here from elsewhere. Absolutely. So it's going to start at noon on this Saturday, and uh, you're going to have from 12.30 to 3.30 pulled pork and drinks for $5, and it's going to be excellent food and a lot of fun. Stop out and, and enjoy and look at everything and eat some new friends and look at some old things. Absolutely. Gary Shoresman, thank you for being on the program this morning, and we'll keep plugging it all the way through till Thursday when I'm off the air. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for your time. You bet. Thank you. That man has done a lot for the history and the keeping of the history of this area, along with many, many others. And that's going to be the Minidoka County Historical Society Open House at 99 East Baseline in Rupert this coming Saturday, May 20th, beginning at noon. And they're going to have the dedication of the new Ray Stockton Tack and Livery Room. Going to be great. And then that gun show by Wayne Birch, uh, over 200 firearms, and I've got a picture of some of them here, really interesting. So try to make it over there this weekend. Call 
calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a jingle on the landline. I would love right now to hear from you. So give us a call. While I'm waiting, I want to remind you, too, as I get everything put together here, Linux, along with Ramsey Heating and Electric, and, of course, uh, they've got up to $1,700 in rebates on qualifying new Linux home comfort systems that can keep your home feeling perfect. No matter what the weather is outside, call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Linux. Also, our friends at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Now, I'll give you the number now, and I'll give it to you again, 436-3200. They are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicash area, and believe me, their residents really have a good time. They're always going to such uh, community events as Wilson Theater Productions, OVAC, the 4th of July Parade in Rupert, and so much more. And they've got a great facility and they invite the public to visit them anytime for tours and check them out autumn haven assisted living center 924 christian way in rupert 436 3200 they're small compared to some but with a bigger heart than most all right, time for your calls, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Remember those kids? i got to get this story in. It's a good story about kids. Remember those kids back at uh, Forest Lake, Minnesota, a couple of weeks ago? Well, they walked out of school. They protested. But wait a minute, wait a minute. You might think that they were supporting a liberal cause or something. No, no. These kids walked out of school in support of their local police force. That's right. The city council back in Forest Lake, Minnesota, made a stupid decision to cancel and eliminate the local police force. Uh, I think it was 25 officers, and they were going to go on a county basis instead of a city basis. Well, the families, many of which were tied to the school system and everything, the families absolutely were irate that they were going to have their local police force canceled and officers that they knew and trusted were going to be out of work and everything. And the kids one day at school, they staged a walkout in support of their local police. They were supporting the police. And well over a 1,000 kids walked out of school and stood out in the parking lot, etc. Well, in the last two weeks, I want to give you an update on this story. The city council of Forest Lake, Minnesota said, Oops, maybe we made a mistake. Their ears have been burning. And last night, they rescinded the... um, I guess the move that they were going to cancel their police force, they've changed their minds due to all the public input, I believe, and now they're going to rehire all the police force, over 25, I believe, and put them back in force. And uh, I, I want to say thanks to the kids. I know some people that listen back there every day in Minnesota. And uh, I want to congratulate the kids of Forest Lake, Minnesota. You stood up for what was right in your community. God bless you. Oh, my goodness sakes. Let's see what else have I got here. Oh, let's ride. Oh, my goodness sakes, yes. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6. Saturdays, 9 to 4. You know, I know we're going to see a couple of cold days here. I know we might see some snow, but then after that, look at the extended forecast. It's going to get up into the high 70s, maybe the low 80s. Oh, 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 it's going to get better. So now is the time to, if you have your watercraft in the Let's Ride, get it serviced because it's not going to be too much longer. You're going to be able to put it to use on the rivers and the lakes, etc. And if you don't have one and you want to get some watercraft, they've got all the watercrafts for sale. But they are going fast at Let's Ride. You be sure and stop in and see them today. And don't forget to check out all the 4x4s and the, and the side-by-sides, everything they've got right there at let's ride 270 highway 24 and rupert yep where the fun is sold you stop over and see them today 
I've always said, while you're over in that neck of the woods, you need to also make an appointment and uh, go over there the same day and then see our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You know, Deanna and I have been over there many, many times, and Todd's called many times, got a friendship with those folks, but they really are the professionals. They're dedicated and responsive to your needs and very devoted to serving you. So please, whether it's life insurance, whether it's health insurance, insurance, whether it's retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more, you call and make an appointment today. Easy number to remember at 436-4424. 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. You give them a call right now. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, this next lady on our program, And uh, it was an outstanding story that she had related to us about her husband that is in jail right now because of his support for the Bundy family down in Nevada and circumstances that have prevailed themselves to where the government has made uh, so-called criminals out of people that were just standing up for their rights. And I'd like to welcome back on the program Andrea Parker. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, Andrea, once again, I'd like you to reiterate as we start our conversation off here this morning, and uh, like I said the last time, kind of give me a chance to jump in on uh, certain occasions and ask more questions, but bring us up to date as to why your husband is uh, being incarcerated right now. What horrendous crime did he do or was he accused of that's taken him away from your family for over a year? Um, he got in a defensive position on a bridge after um, he saw people in army gear pointing weapons at unarmed protesters in the wash. Okay, so he was... And um, because of that, he was arrested along with 19 other people um, for standing up um, against overreaching government, I guess you would say. Now, let me ask you this. At this point in our conversation, when I look at what's happening in various places around the United States, like Berkeley with the students and they're breaking windows and they're lighting fires and throwing rocks at police and everything and and trying to hit police with various and sundry objects, and your husband did nothing... He's in jail, but these other punks are walking the street. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it is um, infuriating because, you know, there was no violence on the day of the 12th at the Bundy Ranch. There was no violence at all. And we believe there was no violence because people like my husband did bring their weapons. Because at the Bundy Ranch, every day prior to that, there was violence brought on by the BLM against protesters. And um, you look at protests like Standing Rock, where, you know, what did they do to those people? It was negative degrees, and they sprayed them with water, and they shot horrible things at them. And um, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, let me ask you this, Andrea, in regards to your husband's situation. Now, he's been incarcerated for a year. Uh, Was there no opportunity for a bail situation? Was there no uh, working with the government so that he could be out until the trial? Give us that situation. Um, He's actually... What they've done is they've indicted them with um, 16, I believe, different charges and put mandatory minimums, 924Cs, in the, uh, into those charges. So what he's facing um, is like 100 years. Oh, my god. And so goodness. that immediately makes him a flight risk, because if you're facing that much time, um, they believe that you will just take off. They also have them held, I believe, under the Patriot Act as domestic terrorists. Oh, my. And so pretty much as soon as they put you under the Patriot Act, act as domestic terrorist, you have no right. So yeah, there is no way that he will get out pre uh, bail prior to the hearing. And none of the guys, not a single one of the defendants has. 
Well, Andrea, let me ask you this part of it then, and I know there's probably certain things that you don't want to divulge or you don't want to say on the air. I understand that, and please tell me if that's the case. But I certainly hope and pray that you and your husband have qualified good attorneys, and maybe they've given you some kind of an optimism that maybe your husband can beat this uh, case. Uh, What are they telling you? Well, we do have uh, public defenders, and so that it, it does make it tough, especially because I'm here in Idaho and everything is going on in Nevada. But we have been through the first trial. We went, we did the entire first trial. The government took um, almost two months, six weeks for their case. We had uh, three days and three witnesses, and we hung the jury. And now they're just going to retry them again. But we have all the faith in the world that we can at least hang the jury again. When you say, and for the benefit of my audience that's listening, hang the jury or a hung jury, give us uh, an example of what exactly that means, would you please? Absolutely. So when they read the uh, charges, um, the jury has to unanimously agree um, either guilt or not guilt. And if they can't unanimously come to a decision, it's a hung jury. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that my husband, who took the stand, was eight people for acquittal, four people for a guilty verdict. Okay. So that's um, more than half. So that's a really good... Um, and I think he and the other gentleman from Idaho, he was like seven to five for acquittal. I see. Now, the other guy, Stephen Stewart from Idaho and um, Ricky Loveling from Montana... They were like 10 to 2, 10 people for acquittal, 2 for um, a guilty, and the conspiracy charges, because they're being charged with conspiracy against the government, um, those were 10 to 2 as well. So really, the government took six weeks to prove a case, and they couldn't prove it. Tell us what it's like as a wife, and uh, and you're sitting there Sorry, and hard time hearing you. Uh, Wheels, you've got to ride the game better so that she can hear me over at the station. Uh, Tell us what it's like as a wife, knowing that your husband basically has to face a double jeopardy situation again in another court trial. What's it like? Well, um, you know, this whole thing has been really tough. They didn't pick them up until two years after the fact. And so we had kind of gone on life like regular. And um, then he's held for a year, and it's the not knowing, not knowing what's next, not, you know, and they don't tell you, and we don't get a lot of information. Sometimes I will find out the week of when we have a court date. Wow. Um, And it was really exciting to get into the courtroom. You know, it was like, okay, here, we're finally going to get an answer. We're finally going to be able to continue with our lives because we're stuck in limbo right now. And to go through the entire court um fiasco, I would say, because it it really opened my eyes to the judicial system, Um, and then come to the end of it and have to restart all over, it is, um, it's discouraging. But, you know, I have all the faith that we can do it again. Um, One of my biggest concerns is how many times can they retry them? Can they just keep doing this until they get what they want? Well, Andrea... Uh, my question would be at that juncture, you said that two years after the event unfolded in Nevada at the Bundy Ranch, it was two years, and then all of a sudden they knocked on your door and said, we're after your husband? Explain what that was like. Um, they, well, it was a huge shock to me, but they actually didn't come to the house. Um I guess my husband was having feelings like they were going to round people up, and he went to our local sheriff and told him, you know, if they ever come for me, just give me a call. I'll come and turn myself in. We believe in the, we used to believe in the judicial system, and we thought we get our fair day in court. Uh, that's not how they were picked up. Um, he was picked up on the way to work in the morning in our little town on Main Street with, I want to say, 10 unmarked FBI agent cars, big SUVs, and like 20 people. And he said that he believed, you know, he had his hands on the steering wheel and wouldn't take them off because he believed that they wanted to shoot him. Wow. And it was very scary. 
I know that I didn't know where he was for a long time. They didn't call and let me know, let me know where the truck was, anything like that. Mm-hmm. They keep you in the truck. And he wasn't taken to our local um, jail. He was immediately driven two and a half hours to Boise, to the Boise jail. Andrea, why did your husband want to get involved with the Bundy situation in the first place? What was his allegiance to the Bundys and or that uh, story down in Nevada? He didn't know the Bundys at all. Um, he saw on Facebook um, a picture of a First Amendment speech zone, like a First Amendment zone. And I remember he showed it to me, and I thought, you know, that's not in America. We have a First Amendment, and it's not a zone. Um, then, you know, as the day went on, there was a video. And in the video, it showed protesters who were protesting outside that First Amendment zone, and they were... Um, being attacked by BLM agents. I saw an old lady get lifted off of the ground and body slammed into the ground, and this is like a grandma. And I was in shock and appalled. Then you see BLM agents with attack dogs um, attacking the dogs on the protesters and tasering them. And it was just, you know... It brings you back to, like, what is going on? I don't understand. First off, why the BLM is even doing that? Why isn't the police out there? Yeah. And so it was shocking to us, and Eric, um, you know, he believes that we've got to stand up for each other. So he went down there to see exactly what was going on. Let me ask you, uh, at that point, what about the local sheriff getting involved? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's under the jurisdiction at that location of the Clark County Sheriff. Why didn't he take charge of the situation? Because the sheriff, in all circumstances, as far as I know, they take precedence in their county as the supreme leader, if you will, as to what is or is not going to take place. Where was the county sheriff? Actually, um, towards the end, like actually on the 11th and the 12th, the sheriff did try to take over the situation. And I have, um, in court, I heard BLM agents say they did not believe that the sheriff had jurisdiction over the BLM. They said that under oath in court. And it comes out in the court that um, the sheriff had told the BLM to cease their operations and even the governor of Nevada had made comments about how it wasn't right. And I think my husband had seen um, that comment from the governor before he went down even. And um, I believe that the BLM, you know, we found out that they are armed to the teeth. And um, they are a rogue agency that believes that they don't. nobody has jurisdiction over them. What was the motivating factor? Now, I know the Bundy family. Uh, I should say that up front. I've uh, known them for close to 35, 40 years. But what was the motivating factor that caused the problem with the BLM and the government, per se? What were they, the Bundys, doing or not doing that all of a sudden these BLM agents and everybody thought they've got to come down on them like a cat to a plate of milk and be tough? Why? What caused and precipitated this? You know, um, it's really hard for me to speak for the Bundys. You know, I know them now, but I didn't really know them then. And I, I want to say it was all over the land. The BLM was uh, trying to run them off their land like they had run many other ranchers off of their land. I think that the, I think it come out that Harry Reid owns land right by there and they needed the land. Not sure why, so they were doing everything they can to get these ranchers off the land. Mm-hmm. Now, what the court orders were about um, the be uh, the Bundys grazing their cattle on land that they weren't paying their grazing fees for. I see. And uh, the Bundys believe they didn't want to pay their grazing fees to the BLM and then have that money used against them to run them off their land. And I believe that Bundy tried to pay his grazing fees to the county and they wouldn't take them. I see. Now, in regards to help 
for you and your family and others involved in this case. Uh, what about our, our senators, our national senators like Rish and Crapo or state help uh, of people involved in politics? Are they offering any assistance to you and your family? Um, you know, we tried to get, I've tried to talk to Labrador on multiple occasions. I went down to a GOP in- convention and talked to people as they were coming out. Um, I'm not getting a lot of help. You know, there is uh, a few. Um, Dorothy Moon is one of them. Um, but I believe she's in, in Scott's zone, Scott Drexler's area, and maybe um, Am and Bundy. Um, I, you know, we've written. We've written to local. We've written to national. We're not getting any responses, really. You're not getting um, any. You, pardon my interruption, Andrea, but you... because you know, you think, oh, there'll be there'll be people to stand for you too. Yeah. And so far, we haven't had a lot of people in high positions speak up for us. Well. Now, your family situation, are you allowed to go see your husband? Are you allowed to uh, have visits uh, periodically through the week? Give us that story. Um, I can drive about 11 hours down to the jail. Oh, my. And I get an hour visit with him on a TV monitor that's kind of fuzzy. And sometimes you can't hear through the phone. Um, So it's pretty discouraging, you know, um, there was also the people in Oregon, and, and they had a, a system where you could, like, Skype from home. And Nevada doesn't offer that. And it's really it's, it's really hard for us, especially for the kids. The kids have only been down to see them maybe three times in the last year, and it's tough for them. Oh, my. Uh, Andrea, while you mentioned your children, how old are they, and how are they standing up without their dad there? Um, uh, my son just turned 11. Eric missed two of his birthdays. And my daughter just turned five. Um, Eric missed her birthday and her first day of school. Wow. Um, and, you know, we're doing the best we can to keep, to keep them from having to live too much of this. Obviously, they miss him dearly, and it's not the same, but we're... Um, positive. Well, you are a very strong lady, and I want to compliment you. I've never met you, but uh, your voice and your uh, your backbone to stand up and say what you're saying. Uh, what about help for you? I mean, are there people getting involved and saying, Andrea, we'll do this for you, we'll try to do that for you, or are you kind of a one woman on an island all by yourself? Um, I do have support. Uh, you know, there's some really great people that support the Bundys, that support all of us. There's great people here in Idaho that support us. You know, it does take a village, and, you know, it's it's hard for me right now. I have to go get my own wood. This was one of the worst winters. I had, like, 10 feet of snow at my house. I had to shovel my roof and do all of these things that Eric would normally do, and so I have had people that have been able to help me along the way. Um, and I've got my family nearby, so they were able to watch the kids while I went down to Vegas, which is another hard thing for us. I was, you know, away from my children for three and a half months this since the beginning of the year, oh um, going to trial, and I'm looking at having to do that again in, um, on June 26th. Oh, my goodness. Andrea, we have a caller with a question and a comment, so we'll put them on the air with you. Go ahead, caller. Quickly, you're on the air. Yes, Henry, um, you know, my wife keeps up with this, and uh, she explains to me how Ammon Bundy had been literally tortured in jail. I don't know if this has happened to your husband, and uh, she will cry, and this is such a travesty of justice. And because they've labeled it a domestic terrorism, you then, I guess, you know, our judicial system is tied. The Trump administration... I think if we could somehow bring this to their attention, because, you know, let's face it, you know, Mr. Trump is being bombarded from the left at every chance they can do, every day. And, and, and when you, you, we want him to actually do the things he promised, and, he, and like he said, he says, I am your voice. And uh, right now, Mr. Trump is being beat to death. Yeah. 
by these foul people, and these things are occurring to you, and that it's a travesty of justice. And how we get some attention to this, I don't know, but this is a this infuriates me to no end, and and uh, I feel terrible for you, and uh, I, I hope Zeb keeps having you on because we need to get this thing, you know. Exposed more. I'll hang up. I appreciate it, Randy. Uh, Andrea, respond to the caller, if you would, please. Absolutely. When my husband first um, went and was arrested and got transferred down to Nevada, um, he was in a prison transport plane. And um, there was a lot of prisoners, including Scott and Steve from down here, and they picked up Dave Bundy from um, Salt Lake. And they flew him in. When they arrived in Vegas, they were met at the tarmac with 20 officers in full SWAT gear, and they came on the plane and just took Eric and Davey off the plane. And Scott and Eric that were still, or Scott and Steve that were still on the plane, they just were taken off like regular prisoners. Then Eric was put into solitary confinement for, I want to say, three to four months. If you, I mean, to me that's cruel and unusual, uh, punishment for someone that isn't even convicted yet. And I believe they were doing that to try to um, break him down and make him take a plea deal. I don't know if you know this, but over 90%, I, I want to say even over 95% of all federal cases end in a plea deal. They never go to a courtroom. And it's because they use these tactics to scare and intimidate people. Wow. How is your husband standing up under all this? Uh, he must be absolutely mentally distraught being away from his family like he is and worrying for your welfare. How is he holding up? Um, you know, we definitely have taken a low, you know, a low turn after we got the um, hung jury and it was declared a mistrial. All of our, you know, we all kind of sank a little bit because it's like, you know, we have to do this all over again. And it's very difficult, especially when you, you got to the point where you're entering a courtroom, you're finally going to get an answer, and, and we go back to the beginning. But we are staying as positive as we can be. You know, we all have good days and bad days. Um, and all I can do is just be supportive for him. You know, he calls, I put all my problems aside so that I can stand for him because he's got, you know, he's st there by himself. All he gets is his outside phone calls um, to connect him with the real world. Well, at the risk of prying into a situation that you don't want to talk about, I'll ask you this. How are you managing to meet your monthly obligations and run your household? I mean, this must be extremely tough right now. Um, it definitely is. I work. Um, I've had to do fundraisers for... Um, to keep my house going while I'm down in Las Vegas, um, I work crazy hours um, while I'm here, which isn't good for the kids. But, you know, I do rely on donations from people to help keep us going. Andrea, I, I want to have you back. There's a lot more questions I have to ask, but I want to revert to one last question before we let you go for today. And I want to go back to help from our senators, Crapo and uh, Rish and our congressmen like Labrador and Simpson. What about demands? I don't mean asking. I mean demands that they get involved and help. Uh, you, sometimes you've got to slam your fist on the table and say, I want you to respond to me. Is this being done or is it just lip service or a form letter um <laughs> we've demanded i was going to say um there was a representative that i got a sit-down meeting with and i told her about how many times i've tried to contact labrador and um she then from her cell phone called labrador's office and they actually pick up because it's, it's one representative to another and um once and i got lip service and he called, you know, I did get a call back from someone in his office, never from him himself. And they'd listen to my story and be like, oh, yeah, we'll get back with you. And then nothing. And uh, we have had people that have been, you know, down at his office calling all the time. I've practically given up because, I mean, you can only write so many letters, make so many phone calls until you're blue in the face, um, until you see they really don't care. I agree. 
Andrea, I'm I'm personally going to be mentioning this to some of these people I mentioned earlier uh, about your case, and I will have you back on the air and hopefully another week, maybe two weeks. Thank you, and I mean this when I say this. God's blessings to you and your family, and I hope all goes better. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Wow, I mean, that's an emotional story, and I get really worked up listening to that. And I guess what I'm going to say, and this might offend somebody, but Labrador, you want to run for governor? Okay, fine. Help this lady. Rish, Crapo, help this lady. Simpson, see what you can do to help. Don't run away. It's time for the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company CPAs, providing accounting services to the Minicash area and beyond for over 50 years. Tax return preparation, tax planning, payroll services, retirement planning, all of this and more with offices in Burley and Rupert. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Be prepared for some rain and possible snow showers as we get through the week. But, you know, it is May. Welcome to southern Idaho. Looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for this morning. Increasing clouds for this afternoon, bringing with them periods of rain showers. Possible thunderstorms as well. And winds are going to be picking up. We're going to be in a wind advisory through tomorrow about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are expecting a high of 61 for today. Tonight, rain showers, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations, low of 34. That's going to carry over for tomorrow. We may see a little bit of sunshine, but thunderstorms and rain showers for the lower elevations. Snow showers for the upper elevations, a high of 46 with an overnight low of 35. And that could continue through Thursday with rain showers in the forecast and a high of 58. That's is your weather presented the rant. Uh, thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody by Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPA is 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. They are the best at what they do, and that's serving you. Phillips, Oaks, C- Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs, get a hold of them today. Uh, I'm going to take some leniency here and make some calls after this program and start dotting the I's and crossing the T's for the help of that young woman, Andrea Parker, and her family and her husband. And it's despicable to me that people that uh, say they are servants to the constituents in the community aren't. And uh, she said she tried to get a hold of Labrador. She said she had nothing back from him personally. You know, are we that big and important in politics today? Really? Are we that big and important to where human misery and human suffering? Oh, well, I'll just have one of my aides call and just kind of salve the situation. Is that really what's going on? And then they want our votes to run for office? I don't think so. And I'll remember that when it comes election time. I'll be back in about three minutes with Dr. History. Don't go away. I uh, promise you, the audience, that we're going to stay on top of the Andrea Parker story with her husband being jailed in Nevada and treated like uh, a common Middle Eastern uh, absolute killing terrorist. And uh, I'm going to have more on this story. I'm upset that our so-called politicals are not getting involved. I'll find out more. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, including Western... Far, West, I've, where'd my mind go, Ken? Did you take it when you came in the door? I guess I'm mad. Western Way Services, I hope they didn't hear that. Always at your disposal. I'll tell you what, garbage problems, no more. Western Waste Services, 734 Did you ever have that happened to where your mind all of a sudden just leaves you? Never had it happen. You must be getting old. Thank you. (laughs) 
Uh, but anyhow, we're going to have uh, Dr. History momentarily. I want to remind you, too, about Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. They absolutely would like you to come by and visit the facility anytime for tours, and they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place for your loved one. Call them at 436-3200. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. They are small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Call them, 436-3200. Well, at least I can remember who's in the studio with me right now, and that happens to be a very, very dear friend for many, many years, and uh, that's Dr. Ken Turner, better known as Dr. History. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing? Uh, you already know that. I know. I was going to say, calm down, take a breath. I am upset about that story, though, and yeah. I, I don't mean to take a lot of your time on your program, but I'm not going to let that dog lay on the porch. Good, good, good. I promise you. All righty. Okay. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I just want to give a plug. Last week, which I should have said last week, uh, I actually got to speak at the Albin Historical Society meeting last Thursday night and had a good group of people up there and just told some stories and actually friday and saturday out east of declo they had an event called farm days oh i know it. i wanted to get there was that at bagby's yeah yeah Uh, you know ray if you're listening this morning i owe you a steak dinner because i have not made it over to see not only farm days but the stagecoach and i'm just upset oh that that. stagecoach is immaculate you saw it oh yeah just absolutely perfect well anything bagby and his help builds is perfect other carriages and one thing other. it was, it was worth, definitely worth going next yeah. year uh, they need to advertise a little better and get more people out there uh, you know what I wish he would have called me and let me know because I didn't have the note and kind of out of sight out of mind yeah. I, I just didn't make it yep okay well you know Zeb uh, when we talk about uh, gun toting people in the old west we pretty well talk about the men how about we talk about some of the women and some of the gals <laughs> especially some that worked in some of the um, be careful i got to watch how i say this just skip it let's just... <laughs> Let me put it this way. You know, you've heard of Annie Oakley. Recreational uh, yes, places. Yes. You've heard of Annie Oakley and, and uh, you know, some of the others, you know, yeah. the Calamity Jane. But we're yeah. going to talk about, talk about some that uh, weren't so uh, notorious or famous. Well, like what? Well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, actually, women, too, actually observed a gun code in the West. And the gun code had little in common with ideas of fair play. I okay? see. Uh-huh. We can talk about that. Okay. But from diaries and books and letters and newspapers, it's possible to kind of piece together some of the rules of feminine gunplay. Okay. Here's some of the rules. All right. Uh, strange men will do for you to shoot, or you can scare them to death. That's number one. That's number one. Num- you can, like, shoot in the floor? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And number two, shoot first, ask questions later. Okay, so, like, uh, they're fair game. Yes. Number three, if you shoot a man in the back, he rarely has a chance to return fire. Well, now, that's an interesting <laughs> concept. Okay. Number four, shoot from ambush if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're really coming up with some great feminine okay. rules on shooting here. Uh, oh, we, well, we got number five here. Okay, number five. If a man needs killing, go ahead and do it, especially if there is no one you can consult about it. This all took place back in the 1800s, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was the gun. Have things changed? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not so much. I don't know. But anyway, you know, the gun code for Western women may have been less romantic and chivalrous than the men's code, but it was effective. Yeah. At the turn of the century, I'm going to... We're going to talk about some of these ladies. There was a Mrs. Frank Adams, a Texas woman who rode, drank, and shot expertly, was thought to have plugged a man in the back, an unnamed South Texas woman who ramrodded her own ranch, broke her own horses, blew the top off a cowboy's head with a forty-five when he got fresh and pinched her ankle in fun. Uh, whoa, whoa. Evidently, these... How dare he pinch her yeah, ankle? Well, he didn't do it again. And uh, evidently, these men needed killing. Blew the so, top of his head off? Well, Maybe just a little bit of it. I don't know. I see. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to have a... What about a blind date with her? <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Okay, now the mother of a guy named Bob Crabb threatened to let her trigger finger do the talking when two strangers stole some oxen from the family ranch in the Texas Panhandle and then offered to sell them back to her for $35 apiece. 
Mrs. Crab told them she didn't have that money. They came back the next day with the oxen and said they would take five dollars. Uh huh. When she wouldn't pay, they started to leave. Mrs. Crab grabbed for her forty-five and said, "Go ahead, but I will kill both of you before you get away." Okay. Oh, the she was men, a soft-spoken lady. The men didn't call her bluff. Lucky for them. Bob testified his mother could kill a bird on the wing, and she hardly ever missed. So they, they they were they were smart enough to give her back her oxen. Yeah, but wait a minute, Doc. Have you ever shot one of those old Colt forty fives? No, I have. And to think that anybody, male or woman, could really be effective with those forty fives with the recoil and everything else. Yeah. I mean, that's like holding a cannon in your well, hand. Well, evidently she was good at it. Now, another lady, a New Mexico woman known as Lady Castile, fired Lady Castile. Castile fire just past her herder's ear okay her sheep herder's ear he'd gotten smart with her and re- had refused to leave when she told him to she said i didn't try to hit you that time but i just wanted to show that i mean what i say so she just kind of nicked his ear nicked his ear <laughs> yeah okay so here we have a, a mrs cassie redwine of the texas panhandle Oh, this has got to be good yeah. when you got a name redwine look out uh, yeah she practiced the code on outlaws, okay? Yeah. She didn't necessarily, necessarily shoot them in the back, but she did ambush a few. Now, there was a guy named Black Pedro, and he had some robbers that were terrorizing the upper Red and Canadian rivers. Black Pedro. Black Pedro. <laughs> hey, don't you love these names? Don't you love it? I'm having a ball listening. Okay, so when 500 head of her own stock disappeared, Cassie decided to hunt down the culprits. It took three days for Cassie and her posse to find the rustler's secret camp. She formed her own posse? Yeah. Captured the men there. Now, Black Pedro was not among them. Uh-oh. Okay, So when he rode in later, Cassie, actually, she kind of uh, disguised herself. She dressed in some rustler's clothes, and she picked him off. She got She got what? him. Yeah. The rest of the outlaws were either killed or captured. When Cassie's men prepared to hang or shoot the prisoners... Cassie kind of took a little sympathy, and uh, she kind of left. And so, whether they did hang him or shoot him, she kind of, you know, she kind of let them do what they wanted to do. Is it wrong, or is it even sexist, for me to be formulating in my mind a picture of what these ladies look like? Okay, well, let me show you a picture. Okay, here's a picture of Pearl Hart, and okay. she is quite an attractive lady. Look at that. Ah. Uh, right? I, yeah, I mean she's 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 not a big, large, no. heavy bone woman. She she's relatively small and feminine looking. Yeah. And that what's her name? Uh, that's Pearl Hart. What did she do? Well, actually, we've done a story on her, but we're, we're, uh, that's let's go on with some of these other people. Okay, it's your program. Okay, here we go. So another woman, unidentified except that she was dangerous, made use of disguise to pass as a cowboy on the cattle trail. Oh, I remember that. Okay. She went from one herd to another until she located her previous boyfriend. Okay. Previous. Previous. Like in earlier. Yeah. Part of her costume w- involved carrying a revolver, and she, when she found her former boyfriend, she used it. I see. Now. She, they went out target shooting. Well, she never told what she'd done to him, but she did remark, quote, I'll bet he won't trifle with another girl's affections. <laughs> so perhaps uh, he's met his demise. Or, or, or got really scared. I see. <laughs> okay. Now, one gun wasn't enough for some ladies. There was a Mrs. Wheeler of Mobati, Texas. Mobati, Texas. Mobati, Texas. Okay. Figured that two guns were better than one yeah. when she set out to get back her daughter, who had been stolen away. So, armed with a six-shooter and a Winchester rifle, the, oh my. the good mother prowled the streets of the town, looking not for her daughter, but the, for the person responsible. So, she knew who it was. Yeah. Okay. So, bystanders, including the marshal, <laughs> watched from behind the a fence. The marshal stayed behind a fence? <laughs> he was hiding behind a fence. So, until then, a guy named uh, Sheriff Cap Arrington arrived. Well, the lawmen drew their weapons and threw down on Mrs. Wheeler, ordered her to drop her guns. Before they could get her to jail, she tripped them and drew a pistol, and after more scuffling, the law finally prevailed. 
So it took a sheriff, a marshal, and a posse to subdue this lady so she wouldn't kill the guy that stole her dog. I'll bet she was a petite (laughs) little lady at the Sunday church uh, tea party. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah, well, now, guns, you know, could equalize the situation, and sometimes armed women would wade in to see that justice was served when three strangers from Texas shot a ranch hand at the Bassett's Colorado Ranch, uh, shot him in the back. Mrs. Bassett took Winchester in hand and got the drop on them. Okay? Really? The three guys. She disarmed them, marched them back to the dying man, and demanded an explanation. Back why did, to the dying man? Yeah, the guy that they'd shot. Wanted to know, you know, why did they do that? So yeah. the one who had done the shooting claimed that the Bassett man had shot and killed his brother in Abilene, Kansas. And he was just settling the score. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Bassett explained that shooting a man in the back was not the way they settle a score in Colorado. I see. So the lady lined the three up against the bunkhouse wall and inf- invited the Bassett man, the guy that had been shot in the back, uh, to shoot one, two, or all three if it suited him. Now, wait a minute. This guy is shot in the back, and he's still able to yeah. pick up a gun? Yeah. And uh, anyway, but... By that time, he actually had lost enough blood. He was kind of too weak to hold the gun. So uh, evidently, I don't know what happened to three guys. Did anybody think about rendering first aid? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I think revenge was more Holy in the mind. Cow. Yeah. So anyway, guns provide some women with courage they might not have had otherwise. Uh, Ellen Casey of Lincoln County, New Mexico. Now, what a sweet sound. Yeah, name. Ellen Casey, just yeah. a feminine name. She became excited when a party of Apache stole some cattle and horses from the Casey Ranch. Okay. So, declaring that she was not afraid, Ellen grabbed a shotgun and hastily loaded it. Her husband, who watched her preparations, tried to advise her against going, but she brushed him aside. And she took off. Wait a minute. And her you husband mean to let tell her me go. The husband, this little mealy mouth, milk toast yeah. husband, let her go fight the Indians? Yeah. Okay. So oh, he was a dandy. Yeah. So when she returned with the horses that had been stolen. She got them? She got them. He pointed out that she had loaded her shotgun. She had a, a shotgun that she'd loaded. But she'd loaded it wrong, so it actually would not even shoot. You're but kidding. but the Indians thought it would. They didn't know that. They didn't know that. She got her horses back. So, and then there's the rule that always... Now, the, wonder what kind of a marriage they had. <laughs> I'm not sure who were the pants, but I have an uh, idea. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then there's the rule that allows a woman to scare strange men to death. When a party of Apache accosted Mrs. Mary Nugent near her Tombstone, Arizona ranch, she knew she couldn't get to her gun quickly enough, so she let them know she saw them and she wasn't afraid. And she invited them to breakfast. Okay? You got this picture? Yeah, the okay. Apaches. They're, they're coming into breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. Pancakes yeah. and yeah. eggs. Yeah, yeah. So after they'd feasted, she told them she needed some They help. went in and ate? Ate in her house, in her cabin. So after they'd eaten, she told them she needed some help and put them to work hauling supplies into a storeroom. Wait, something's wrong with this picture here. <laughs> okay. These Indians were going to kill her, right? Right. But she invites them to breakfast. And then she has them do some work. Okay. So they're hauling supplies into a storeroom with a heavy door. When the Apache were off guard, Mary slammed the door and bolted it. Then she ran for her rifle, fired into the door to warn them not to come out. They didn't try, and when they were later released, nobody thought to ask them why they'd come to the Nugent Ranch in the first place. So they'd come to the ranch, but, you know, so we don't know really why they were coming. Maybe they were not really going to do anything bad, but who knows? I'm still torn in figuring that these were not the smartest Indians in the world. (laughs) Well, you know, they had breakfast, you know. (laughs) They weren't hungry. So... Now, no female was better known for readiness to use her weapons, pistols, a rifle, a shotgun, a whip, and a vocabulary in both English and Spanish that would have scalded, as this says, scalded the hide off a dog than a lady by the name of Sally Skull. Sally Skull. Now, what picture comes into your mind there, Zeb? A rather large woman that doesn't look like she's a uh, young lady. Yeah, okay. Well, Sally Skull, I don't have a picture. But few were her equals in the use of fire- firearms. Really? Sally rode in daylight and dark across the Mexican border to trade horses. Uh-huh. She went through at least three husbands. Kind of like Lonesome Doves. <laughs> 
so I went through at least three husbands, reputedly played poker with John Wesley Harden. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, won at least one gunfight with a man. She drove a freight wagon during the Civil War. Yeah, I think my picture's coming true. <laughs> it's coming back. Sally was without mercy when she got angry, and some said it didn't take much to make her mad. She once called out a man who'd made unfavorable remarks about her and fired out his boots until he did some dancing. Until he did some dancing. <laughs> oh, can wow. you just picture this? And these lady? are all women doing yes. this. Yeah, these are the. Oh, the fairer the, sex. The, the, the ladies of the West. Yeah. Now, ranch women sometimes dealt justice with the weapons other than guns. There was a Mrs. Victor Daniels, and she ran a ranch jointly with her husband on the upper Healer Valley of Arizona. Ordinarily, she was on the range with her husband, but a sick baby kept her home one day. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, looking up from her work, Mrs. Daniel noticed two strange men driving off part of the herd. Oh, so they came in and just broad yeah, daylight just, took yeah. their cattle. Yeah. So she sprang into the saddle, raced after them, built a loop, and caught one of them by the neck, jerking him out of the saddle. In other words, she roped this guy yeah. around the neck. Jerked him out of the saddle. Yeah, like the Roy Rogers on yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah, and as he fell, she drew her pistol and invited the other thief to drive her cattle back to the ranch. Invited him. Yeah, in a nice, kindly way Very with nice. her pistol. Yeah. When that was done, she told him to clear out. Now, the first rustler lay in the brush with his neck broken, and there was no official inquiry. Well... I wonder why. <laughs> so I'm assuming he was dead. <laughs> she roped this guy around the neck. Yeah, you know, dallied around yeah. the saddle horn. Just, I mean, just holy like, yeah. cow. Okay, now another lady, Alice Stillwell Henderson. Alice Henderson. Wasn't she the mother of, uh, what was the TV series where uh, all the kids were uh, yeah, in little squares? Yeah, uh, uh, Alice Henderson? Yeah, I think that was yeah. the maid. Oh, that was the maid. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, she guarded the perimeters of the Big Bend country with her husband and brothers, often living in a tent on the open range. She was a crack shot. During one incident, Alice made an all-night ride alone to get help to recover stolen cattle, and five bandits rode into her camp just as she set up. She disarmed them and entertained them at gunpoint all day long until her own riders returned with the stolen herd. Now, wait a minute. She disarmed five bad guys. Five bad guys and kept that at gunpoint all day long. I suspect they didn't dare twitch. Just my, just, I'm just There's guessing. a lot of thoughts going through my mind, <laughs> some of which I can't relay at this point in the conversation. <laughs> Anyway, so now on one occasion, Alice's husband has some difficulty with the Mexican military. Mexican, oh my. Okay, nobody said exactly what the trouble was, Uh but he had to leave the country in a hurry. Left. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah. He told Alice before he left that the Mexicans had his rifle and some cattle, and he asked her to go recover them, go get them. He asked his wife? To go get him. Well, she wasted no time in getting back the rifle, and she would galloped into Mexico, entered a building, had taken the rifle from under the nose of a Captain Riviera, and some 50 men under his command. 50 men. And she walked in and got his rifle. And one woman. One woman. It says Alice got away. It took her longer to recover her husband's cattle, but she took back some 2,000 head over the next two years. How did she do that? <laughs> you know, I, who knows? These women were amazing. Are these true stories, Absolute, or are you making you them know, up? I have never told a false statement here yet mm. <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, the, you know, the dime novels and newspapers, they fe- feature tales of the female gunslingers, outlaws, cattle thieves like Calamity Jane, Bell Star, Cattle Annie, Little Britches, Rose of the Cimarron. And right along with stories of completely fictional characters, you know, they just made things up sometimes. But most of what was written was fiction, whether it was about real or imaginary characters. But even the most imaginative dime novel plot couldn't hold a candle to to reality. I mean, these stories, how could you make these up? Well, you know they had to be tough, though. Yeah. Back in those days. They did. They did. Okay, I got one more. One more. I got one minute. Okay. So we take the case of Mrs. Stevens, who lived in Lonesome Valley, Arizona. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. She kept a gun handy at all times, especially when her husband, Louis, left to travel the 30 miles to town. Well, when Mrs. Stevens, left alone with her children, looked out the window, she saw what looked like a rag (coughs) hanging on a bush outside. Okay, So she's looking out the window, 
She didn't remember hanging anything out there, so she grabbed her gun, drew a bead on the rag, and shot. Well, it was an Indian. Okay? Dead. Now, he wasn't alone. His fellows had the ranch house surrounded. She reloaded, kept firing, holding off the Indians, until some cowboys who were in the vicinity heard her shots and came to the rescue. When things settled down, the cowboys prepared to ride away. They asked Mrs. Stevens if she wanted to send a message to her husband. She wrote, Dear Lewis, the Apaches came. I'm mighty nigh out of buckshot. Please send some more. Your loving wife. Are you kidding? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Please send more buckshot. I'm getting Your low. loving wife. Your loving wife. I'm getting low on do you realize ammunition. What, do you realize what you've done here this morning? I, I'm not sure. Do you realize that you have uh, firmed up the toughness of the American cowgirl? Oh, yeah. And you're married, and I'm married, and we better watch out. <laughs> do not trifle with a woman's feelings. <laughs> Don't <laughs> leave a gun around them. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> Those were great stories this morning. But you know, I, do you have any more pictures? Uh, that I mean, I wondered if you had one of Little Mrs. Uh, no, I don't. Not in this book, oh, I don't. Okay. But I am. Wow. Uh, there's another. I was going to get on to the women of the wagon train. Let's do that next and week. We'll do the. We'll I'm do. out of time, but yeah. that was excellent. And now all men, knowing the code of the West, watch are out. living in fear. Hold on, Doctor History. I'll get right back with you in a minute. But uh, that's Doctor History for this week, and we want to say thanks to Doctor Ken Turner for all of his effort in taking us back into the days of yesteryear. Don't forget on. Thursdays, we have a program segment called Cache County School Day, sponsored by two wonderful businesses, A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley and the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley. At A Child's World, lots and lots of spring dresses, some 20% off, my goodness, and all the baby clothing and all the baby furniture, everything at A Child's World in Burley. And life-saving colonoscopies, glaucoma surgery, much more much more outpatient surgery save you money at the ambulatory surgery center at 1344 highland in burley number to call 677-8888 those two businesses ambulatory surgery center cough drop makes my mouth really water and the child's world bringing you school days in cashew county on thursdays at 10 10 we're going to send it back over to our main studio and then we have the great bald-headed one coming in with some guests and we'll be right back in about three minutes don't go away and now back to zeb at the ranch on am 1230 kbar to reach zeb call 436-2244 or toll free one eight six six nine two seven forty five eighty seven. And now here is Zeb Bell. And welcome back. And we've got some guests in the studio. We'll get right to them momentarily. But don't forget, Ag Express is looking for drivers. That's right. Call Dale and Paul at four three eight 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 six. Allen in Twin Falls at seven three one two four nine five. And Russ in Burley at four three one seven one seven five. Looking for full and part time positions. Retired folks. Folks, hey, here's a job for you, too. Work around your schedule two or three days a week, and you're home every night. Great vacation schedules and benefit programs. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Ag Express is looking for you. Don't forget, too, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox offering rebates of up to $1,700 on home comfort systems. Be sure and get a hold of them today at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And with me in the studio, George has got a cold. I've had bronchitis. Kelly's healthy. JR looks good. George Mass, hold that microphone up close to your mic or your mouth and tell us what you're here for, old buddy. Yes, we're uh, promoting our third annual Idaho uh, Roll Call Memorial Ride at and Rupert. It's uh, Idaho Roll Calls pay tribute and honor our fallen soldiers at, uh, in all of Idaho. That, Absolutely. Uh, so it's, uh, now, let me say up front, George, I'm sorry I'm not going to be here for that. I really apologize. I knew you asked me, and I'll be out of town, but I just want to let you know that up front. Uh, thank you, Zeb. we got Scotty Cameron's going to be our MC. Good, good. And also the city, Rupert, has uh, brought uh, KBAR in. They will broadcast the whole program live. Good. And so, uh, and I'd like to make a comment on that, too, that... 
you don't can't have air a dead air time when you're on live uh, radio, and so like when they're hoisting the flag at half staff, neck, Kelly or uh, Scotty will be talking about what's going on, okay, so, good. so people in the audience good. will know. So we have these gentlemen here that are going to talk about that big day, right? Yes, and uh, I've been very blessed, you know, on uh, different organizations and, and uh, events I do to get the support that I get. makes my job easy, and I couldn't do it without the support. Absolutely. Now, this is the third annual Idaho Roll Call Memorial Ride and Tribute, correct? Yes. Okay. And it's going to be on May 27th. May 27th and 7th and Scott Street and Rupert. Okay. Uh, we'll be uh, putting up a new flag. Uh, Senator Anthon will, will be reading the proclamation he got from the governor, and uh, we'll have uh, food, uh, a short program, uh, and we need to take time. Who's no- cooking? I, I heard some guy, kind of a fat, chubby guy with a bald head. Uh, <laughs> you might know him, Mass, somebody, he's cooking? Yeah, we're, we're going to have pulled pork and, I see. and okay. what have you there. But uh, on every holiday, like Memorial Day or Veterans Day or, or Fourth of July, we're all load up and go to the mountains and uh, forget about what those days are Amen. for. Yeah. And so uh, whether you can attend the event, that'd be great. If you can't, take a moment out, uh, a moment of silence, and uh, just remember. Hey, thank you, George, and I appreciate that. Well, who do you want to have on next? Uh, it's, your, it's your choice. Okay, well, let's just go from left to right and end up with you again, George. And Senator Kelly Anton, uh, you know, George, just nod your head because you don't have a microphone. They can't hear you anyway. But doggone, we got a good choice when we got him in as a state senator, right? Yes, we did. All right. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Zeb, and thanks for saying that. I'm serious when I say that. Um, I criticize, as you may or may not know, politics in general on my program when it's deserved, and I praise when it's necessary. And I think you've done an outstanding job. What's your tie to this uh, third annual Idaho Roll Call Memorial Ride and Monument? Well, first, Zeb, I'll tell you that I'm trying to do a good job, and that's key. I think you have to be interested in doing a good job and forgetting yourself a little bit when you get into politics. That's where it gets to be a problem. My tie, Zeb, to this annual uh, Roll Call Monument is kind of um, in a number of ways, but I've been working with George for years and years on a number of projects. I'm sorry. No, it's been... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's a good guy. Oh, he and is. and uh, we've done a lot of good things. We, on the way over, we were just talking about the flat education program that we have kind of reignited in the Minnecaja school districts yep. um, and uh, we get a lot of positive feedback by, uh, from that uh, what this organization that's actually been working on this uh, roll call is doing is when we raise money that's what we're raising it for we're raising it for patriotic programs for uh, educational programs for our youth and so forth so th- there's that aspect of it but really this event is a special one this is one that we we'd look at over Memorial Day weekend and it's it's just like George said it it's a, this is a time to remember. Yeah. And uh, the worst thing that we can do as a community, the worst thing we can do as individuals, the worst thing we can do for our, our youth is not to remember that every freedom that we enjoy on every, uh, every single day was bought and paid by somebody's life. That's what's great about this uh, memorial. And that's what's great about this, this, uh, this location in Rupert. Uh, and if you can't af- attend on the 27th, take a minute, stop by, and just look at this. When you have a minute, yep. go read the monument. Look at the flag at half staff. It's worth your time. It's worth your kids' time. You know what George and Donna and you and others have done, uh, and George with your school programs, etc. Why isn't this readily acceptable in all schools? Why? I mean, I see every day the need for more education in our schools for our heritage, our constitution, respect for our flag. Your comments. Um, I don't know if I, I've got some ideas as to why we've strayed from that, but I will say a couple of things about this. Uh, it's funny you say this. We, we just had a guy from the Department of Defense come and stop by City Hall in Rupert. Really? And when he came in the front door, we have a, a big plaque there that has a flag that one of our police officers, when he was deployed, took with him and flew over the camp where he was deployed, brought it back. We've framed it. It's beautiful. Uh, he says, you don't see this in very many city halls in the United States. He's been, he says, I've been to a lot of places. Really? He says, I was surprised to see this in your city hall. Um, and, and when we talk about education, Zeb, I go to the, the Idaho State Constitution. 
And the Idaho State Constitution says that we're going to provide a free public education, and there's a reason for it. And the reason that's written right in the Constitution is so that we have an educated populace to defend the republic. In other words, if you don't have people that uh, are educated, and you don't have people that are educated on the principles of good government, you're going to lose good government. And so um, that's why I like these kinds of things. Now, I think that when we look at other school districts, for, for whatever reason, in some of these more liberal places in the country, we've convinced ourselves that uh, being patriotic is somehow un-American, which is shocking to me. Absolutely. I don't even, I don't get it at all. So uh, I, I consider myself very blessed to be able to raise my kids in a place where we don't have to worry about this. I was going to say one more thing, Sam. Nope, go I, ahead. I was go thinking ahead. about this this morning. You know, Ronald Reagan used to say, uh, you can always have peace. All you have to do is surrender. There you go. And, and so we've got to decide as a community that we're going to stand up for this stuff and we're going to fight for it. And if we don't, we're going to lose. That's just that's where we're at. And unfortunately, as a side note to what you just said, we are. We are losing it because we're not standing up for it. And that's unfortunate. It's events like this that rekindle the fire. Yes. There is a gentleman sitting here with us that uh, I have the highest respect and regard for. And he's a uh, our J.R. Strunk. Uh, hold that microphone real close. With the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. J.R., I've told you on this program before, I never have felt the chills, never have looked at that red, white, and blue, and just not had tears come to my eyes when you crank up those motorcycles over there in Rupert. Man, I'm telling you, va, va, boom. Wow, what an emotional feeling. How are you this morning? Great, Jeb. Thank Thank you. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate being able to come on your show and, and promote this and promote everything that has to do with the Constitution and the United States and freedom and right. our our soldiers fallen and, and, and the ones that haven't fallen. Now, at 930 on Saturday morning, the 27th, you and others with the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, uh, you're going to gather at Let's Ride. Tell us what happens then. Well, I got a little 75-mile trip planned. A little 75? Uh, well, that's not very far on a motorcycle. Well, okay. That'd okay. take a couple hours. But okay. I, I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> that I'm was to, George, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. George. Okay. I'm going to uh, take them up for a little ride through the country, let them look at uh, old Malta and up around the top of uh, Connor Creek Summit and back oh. down that direction, and then get back to the memorial site in Rupert for everything. Uh, we're going to ask $15 uh, for each bike, and that will include George's whole pork dinner. And, wow. of course, the proceeds after that will go to the our our flag fund that we're working on here. You know, Jr. let me ask you this. Uh, can anybody with a motorcycle chime in and go along? We appreciate everybody. Really? We don't care. It's, as long as it's not so small, it can't keep up. But uh, So I guess I'd be lagging behind on my four-wheeler. No, it'll probably run 50. <laughs> <laughs> not with me on it, it won't. But no, seriously, you're opening it up for many, many people to enjoy the ride. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Anybody anybody that wants to ride, we're, they're more than welcome. We appreciate all the support we can get for this thing. Okay, and then you're going to go back after the ride to the location at 7th and Scott in Rupert for the program, right? That's correct. Are you going to run those en engines up? I mean, really let them beller? Well, we can, but you probably won't hear it from where you're at. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to miss it this year because I've been a part of it since its inception. And all of you folks add so much to the program. How many riders do you think you're going to have? Well, it's hard to say. You know, these, especially over this holiday, you got a lot of guys that, like George said, that goes camping and whatever. And there's a lot of events, a lot of events all over the valley. Uh, yeah. The combat veterans out of Boise area, they've got two or three different events going on. We've got this down here. I I got word that there's possibility we'll have some of the veterans out of uh, Utah coming up. Oh, uh, this great! Thing. So great. Everybody, uh, it could be like in the past that it might be. 30, 40, it might be 150, 200. It's, oh, my. I wouldn't care if it was seven or 800. Oh, that's fantastic. What kind of a bike are you riding? A Harley. Yeah, I know that, but, I mean, how yeah. big is that dude anyway? Uh, oh, it's not that big. It's an older one. It's only an 80-inch 80 80 inch motor, and it's a ultra-classic. It's one with all the 
goodies all over it. Wow. You know, you know, JR, speaking of Harleys, they've got a sound so unique until themselves. How did they develop that sound, and how did they keep it, and why didn't somebody else try to develop that? It's got a manly John Wayne sound to it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I was told once that Harley Davidson actually patented the sound. Uh, it's, it's all the way the cylinders fire. They Both pistons come up almost simultaneously and it'll fire one than the other and, and that's the way they come up with the noise but uh really there's been a lot of uh offshore motorcycles that's tried to duplicate the sound and it hasn't worked why wow. and then these little wussy bikes go by you know those little crotch rockets <laughs> like that like a wayward they, mosquito they actually they're quite fast they're but they're I have rode them, and they're not comfortable to ride. You know, they got their knees stuffed underneath their armpits, and they look like a jockey that lost his horse. And I don't know how in the world you'd want to get... Have you ever ridden one like that? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, I, I don't care for them. I'm too old. I, you, I don't bend in those spots no more. JR, can you imagine with a mental picture in your mind of George Mass riding one of those little... like? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with him riding on a motorcycle, a <laughs> four-wheeler. <laughs> Give it over to George for a moment. George, uh, this is the third year, and uh, you've done a lot for this, but it's all for our veterans, and they've given their all for our great country. They have, Zeb. Uh, the monument we put in over there is more than just a cement and a piece of rock. Absolutely. Uh, it brings closure. Uh, most of those fallen soldiers never got to tell their mom or dad or kids goodbye. Yeah, you know the, the door was shut, and so it brings a little bit of closure to the family. We find um, on the right a monument, <clears throat> excuse me, and the uh, POW a Memorial Day and special holidays. We'll find a wreath or pot of plant. So it does mean something to somebody. Do a lot of the family members try to attend of families that had soldiers that didn't come home? I'm actually probably fifty percent of the people there. Uh, that is so. A lot of them have just uh, come to uh, pay their respect. You know, it's it, it's unique, I guess. You know, it's something that you don't see or do every day. Right. And so maybe it's out of curiosity. I don't know. But we welcome them all to come. It's our, the uh, program, nothing is completely open to the public. So, What about the program itself, George? I mean, can you give us a little information about that? Yes, uh, Scotty Cameron's going to MC it for us. Uh, Pastor Dan Hendricks is going to do the invocation dedication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have Speaker Mark Hagedorn Hag uh, out of Boise. He's a senator, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Dan Hendricks to sing that song, Home. Uh, oh, my. That, oh, uh, my. I know it's kind of repetitious, but that means an awful lot to me because uh, uh, when you're in the military and you're gone, whether it's peacetime or wartime, to no place like home. Okay, so you're anticipating that to start at the memorial site at what, 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock, yes. 1 o'clock. And JR and the boys will be back after that long 75 mile ride. They should be pulling in hopefully around 1230. We've got to be pretty punctual at 1 o'clock because that's uh, uh, airtime with uh, Scotty Cameron to. to uh, broadcast a whole okay. event live. Now we have a caller with a question and uh, uh, Senator Kelly Anthon can hear he's got a set of headsets on. Caller, go ahead please. Well, good morning, Zeb. I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to call in. and You know, you got three of my biggest heroes sitting right there in your room. Um, God bless George for everything he does for the, the veterans and Jr. and his, his group. Oh, what a bunch of awesome guys. They don't ask for nothing in return. They just get out there and get her done. I uh, appreciate that. Kempon, oh, my gosh. We couldn't have had a better senator uh, placed in the position that he's in. He does an awful lot for George and I and for our community in, in Rupert. And, um, you know, just let your listeners know, if you get a chance, you don't have to come for the whole program, but... Come by and, and and sit and look at the and and worship the the monument. It, it's it's a very solemn place, um, and a lot of people come there to get closure. Anyway, um, just wanted to make a comment. And you guys all have a good day. The much prettier half of uh, the Mass family, George and Donna Mass, she just called in and said congratulations on a great event. We have another caller calling in right now. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Uh, this uh, 
uh, monument is absolutely uh, very special. And why don't you have George and Kelly tell you how it became uh, one of a kind with the flag flying a uh, half of staff. You know, you. I, I will, and thank you very much, Gary. I appreciate that. Uh, Kelly, you've got the microphone. Go ahead and expand on that. Well, thanks, uh, Gary, and thanks, uh, Zeb. Yes, uh, this is a unique monument. You will not find anything like this, uh, except for, we think, one other place in the United States where the flag is flown half-staff 24-7, 365. And that took a lot of work, and that was work that was done by uh, George Mass. Uh, it was done by his grandson, a Adam, and... Uh, and also Dean Cameron, my predecessor, who worked very hard in the legislature to make sure that we got all the laws uh, sorted out and, in <laughs> and changed as necessary to make sure that this would be a legal thing to do. You know, there's so much re respect for the flag that, that, that that respect comes with a lot of rules about how you fly it at, at half-staff. And so when this monument in Rupert was proposed, uh, what was realized is in order to make sure that we were doing things right and to make sure that... Uh, uh, our veterans groups all through Idaho were happy with the way the, the monument was put together. Uh, we did go to the legislature to get their permission. And, and I know Gary called in. I think Gary had a part in that. But uh, George Mass kind of led that with his grandson, Adam. They went to the state legislature. They testified and asked for a bill to be passed. And like I said, uh, both Fred Wood and uh, Dean Cameron uh, carried those bills through the chambers, and it became law. So it's a, it's a special place. You know, there's, uh, when they want to have patriotism and feel the, the real meaning of what it means to be an American, you've got a lot of things going over on Rupert that uh, in the schools and with the flag education and George and Donna and, of course, the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Wow, I mean, it just gives you kind of a, a real tingle up your backbone. This is America. I'll tell you what, Zeb. One of the, the real powerful moments for me last year was when I attended a, a flag retirement ceremony that George had organized over at uh, White Pine Elementary in Burley. And it you had hundreds of fifth graders watching this, and you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. It was amazing. And it, it goes to show you that uh, we can teach our students respect, and, and I think there was a real reverence there. It was, it was impressive. JR, any final thoughts? Uh, I've got a couple of minutes left here, and I thought maybe uh, on behalf of the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, by the way, how big is that organization? Is it all across the United States? It's across the United States in two foreign countries. Wow. So we got, uh, we've got uh, our military over there, and uh, uh, there's all oh, roughly 20,000 members right now in the United 20, States. 20,000. Yes. Are you the same group that uh, rode for the inauguration for Donald Trump? It could be. It, they could have been there, although, uh, oh, politics. Uh, our, our bylaws tell us that we can't, we have to keep in good standings with the community. I and see. And if they're, if you, they was wearing their vest with their patch on it and there was trouble, that causes trouble with them. So uh, if they were there, most of them did not wear their vest for that reason. I see. Although they, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of them was there. Isn't it a shame, though, that here in this country you'd have to hide what you're proud of? Well, it is. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I have a real issue with uh, people stepping on flags, burning oh, flags, boy. you know, stuff like that. And unfortunately, I, I'm afraid if that's what it meant, I'd take the vest off I because I'm not going to tolerate it regardless. But yeah. We're I, seeing more and more of that every day, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely is. There's one thing I'd like to add off uh, add a little bit. Uh, Scrivenish Satchel Stone uh, made a, a pretty generous donation to us, and and uh, we got some really nice stone benches at uh, Memorial now. Oh, Thanks nice. Thanks to them guys. Uh, Scrivenish out of Oakley, Idaho. So, Isn't that nice? Yes, it And is. boy, I bet they're yeah. beautiful. They are. George, George and the boys. You know, done the concrete work, and they they glued the benches down and stuff. They're they're really nice. It'd be people. Uh, we talked about it. We thought it'd be nice to have uh, like some of our elderly or some of our our wounded veterans that needed a place to sit during the ceremonies. They'd give them a, a place to sit. So okay. Well, I've only feel, I've only got a minute left. I got a weather forecast and a commercial to do. George, wrap it up. Invite everybody over. Yes. Uh we would like everybody to show up, but if I can comment real quick, on our we've got the Rupert Police Department will be hosting the flag at half staff. The uh, one in charge is Daniel, which he served in Afghanistan. Okay. We've got the wreath uh, placement and taps by Olita Stringham. Oh, she's great. It is, and uh, 
a lot of those streets can be blocked off, but if you're coming to the event, you can go through the, the blockade to park. Okay. Uh, this is a good event. Uh, come and su- uh, support our veterans and uh, pay tribute. This is what Memorial Weekend's for. God bless you, and I mean that. George Mass, J.R. Strunk, and a great Senator, Kelly Anthon. Uh, we've got to get a weather forecast on here real quick. Don't you guys leave. I need to visit with you for a second. And uh, I want to remind you, the weather brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324. 324- Seven six five seven. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Check it out. All the breakfast sausages, the bratwurst, the bacon, the new buckboard bacon. Mmm, delicious from Scarrow's Meats. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Be prepared for some rain and possible snow showers as we get through the week. But, you know, it is May. Welcome to Southern Idaho. Looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for this morning, increasing clouds for this afternoon, bringing with them periods of rain showers, possible thunderstorms as well, and winds are going to be picking up. We're going to be in a wind advisory through tomorrow about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are expecting a high of 61 for today. Tonight, rain showers, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations, low of 34. That's going to carry over for tomorrow. We may see a little bit of sunshine, but thunderstorms and rain showers for the lower elevations, snow showers for the upper elevations, a high of 46 with an overnight low of 35, and that could continue through Thursday with rain showers in the forecast and a high of 58. That is your weather for Zepa Threat. Hey, Gina, thank you. Brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats. Mmm, Don Scarrow and the crew, delicious meats for you and your family. 331 North Road, Jerome, number to call, 324-7657. Yep. It's true. They're changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Real quick, I want to remind you about our Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Doing the right thing always matters. And to get where you're going this summer, make sure you're driving on the best of tires, the best tread designs, everything from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the tires, with the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Oh, please, don't turn the key on and leave for Aunt Martha and Uncle Fred's until you stop in to any one of the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, of course the Twist family and Paul and Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, Randy on Overland and Burley, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, our major sponsor. God bless everybody. Have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. Dave Beagle from Indianapolis, Indiana. Debbie Critchfield, Idaho Fish and Game Report with the Incredible Hulk. And that's, of course, Kelton Hatch. All of that and more right here on Zebeth Ranch. And remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06.